Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Kishara Chisholm and welcome back to my channel, Kishara Creates. And today we are going to make another um, beautiful painting. So I wanted to do something a little bit different today. So instead of doing flowers, um, we're going to actually paint um, a vegetable today. We are going to do um, a painting of some red and some orange carrots. I thought that carrots would be um, a really great, would make for a great, um, excuse me, painting for today because it would give me the opportunity to be able to introduce um, a new painting tool or artist tool. So because carrots have a rustic texture to them because they are a root vegetable, um, I am going to use my artist spatula today. Um, most of the time you can get them in metal, you can get them in plastic. If you don't have an artist spatula, you can always use a plastic knife or fork or a butter knife or whatever you've got. But we're going to use that to help with doing some simple texture when it comes to um, our carrots. So this painting will probably not take as long as the last two that we did. Hopefully this one will take around about an hour or so. So let's go ahead and get started. So just like usual, um, I'm going to go ahead and paint the background first. Um, the good thing about this painting is we are going to do a little bit of sketching, but it's not going to be as complex as some of the things we've done in the past. So with that all out the way, let's get started. So I want this to kind of have a pretty dark um, background. So... I'm going to use my two inch flat brush and I'm actually just going to start with some black, add a little bit of water to it. There we go. And I'm kind of just going to put it a little bit of everywhere all on the canvas and some on the sides and on the tops too. So this is going to be a darker blue, almost like a teal with maybe a tint of like um, some turquoise or some aqua marine in it. All right, I'm just blending that black out some. Make sure you give the sides some love too. Don't forget about them. All right, so I'm going to add Um, brilliant blue and some turquoise or some aquamarine into that. Just going right over top of where we put the black paint. So the sides also. The sides over here too. The corners of the canvas. All right. All right. Oh, not too bad so far. So you guys, if I look over to the side, I have a reference picture. A lot of the times I use reference pictures just to make sure I have my tones and my colors and highlights and all that good stuff um, correct and helps with my silhouette and composition as well. So as you can see, I'm just starting to kind of blend that blue and that black kind of together some. And I'm just kind of diluting the blue that I already have on my brush just to help with spreading that paint out some. And just like usual, you don't have to be too fussy about the background because we are going to cover up a lot of this as well. Let's see, I'm just going quickly. Like I always say, acrylic Paint, um, paint dries pretty fast, so you kind of want to keep it moving. 
And I'm just going left to right, right to left. Smooth strokes. Don't forget the top and the sides. All right, so I actually like that, but I want to lighten it up just a tad. So I'm going to add some white to that. And I didn't clean off the brush or anything. I'm just going in with that same brush and just adding a little bit of white to it. And see, it still has a good amount of that color already in the brush. I just wanted to kind of lighten it up just a little bit. Actually going to move this little top piece so I can get the top come on I'll just move it up some just a little spot right there where the holder is And I could go ahead and take the blow dryer and dry all this off. Matter of fact, I think I might. Just because I'm going to be putting oranges and some burgundies and all of that over top of this. So I don't want those colors to blend into each other. So I actually do think today I am going to use the blow dryer just to dry this off which is great because I can go ahead and do this bottom part too. So. This one little spot right here. There we go. All right, and I'm gonna stop because I could keep blending, 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 blending forever. So I'm gonna leave that alone and bear with me for a minute or so because I'm gonna use the blow dryer just for a little bit. That way I can turn my canvas over and paint this edge and then I won't have to worry about trying to touch up any of the sides afterwards. So, Luckily, I already have that plugged in, so y'all don't have to wait around for me to try to find my blow dryer and get it plugged in and all that good stuff. But, let's go right ahead. too long at all so I'm just going to turn it over to the side so I can do the bottom part right here so get that same brush that we had I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to add some little touches of black and then I'm going to go right over top of it with that blue that way our canvas is painted all the way around. And you know what? I'm at actually I'm gonna touch up here some more too. Oh, 
All right. So I'm going to flip this again so I can dry off this edge. Only because my cord's not that long for my blow dryer. It's the only reason. good enough that's pretty much dry enough we can always touch back up in a little bit at the end but just wanted to go ahead and do that today so I wouldn't have to worry about it later lower this some more so that my canvas will be secure come on now don't be difficult there we go All right, and I'm going to touch up the sides just a little here and there, just for where the areas might not have been all the way dry, like right here. All right, so I just wanted to touch up that one little spot right there. All right, so I am going to mix up some orange paint and I'm going to start laying out the orange carrots first um, and then I'm going to start adding some of the purple ones kind of in and around them. So I'm not going to be too picky about this composition or anything like that. I just want to start with um, one in the middle. So... Let me mix up pretty much a traditional orange and use my round brush. All right, so I'm just mixing up some orange. I want it kind of light, so you want to do mostly yellow. I'm actually going to add just a little teeny tiny touch of green into that orange. it up against my reference all right dilute that some all right so all of these are going to be different lengths and sizes and shapes and all of that so we're not going to be too particular but I want a lot of the greenery to be up here because all the stems or whatever you want to call them still going to be connected to the carrots so I'm just going to kind of start more so three-fourths in the way. And these don't have to be straight lines or anything like that. Matter of fact, I want them to have some texture to them. So I kind of want the lines to all be different shapes. And I'm not even going to fill them in right now. I'm just adding, well... Kind of maybe just because they're kind of small. All right, so then I'm just gonna lay out some shapes, just kind of similar to that. See, nothing too complicated. We're gonna start with the orange because I want the orange to be the predominant. I'm gonna put the purple ones behind, especially since they're darker, to give the um illusion of a shadow 
and I'm not going to make them all going straight. I'm going to have some going in different directions, different lengths. Now, I'm not going to get too carried away with putting down the orange because we're going to put some purple down and then we're going to go up and around and all that good stuff. We're going to keep adding more until we're suffice with the composition. Right now, it probably looks like little <laughs> worms on the canvas, but it's not going to stay like that, promise. All right. So I just wanted a good amount of the orange already laid out. All right, so now I need some red paint. I'm going to make kind of a deep burgundy or dark red tone just by using I'm using brilliant red which is a very bright red so I'm going to deepen that by adding some green to it add a little at first because you can always add more um, to give it more well no I actually kind of like that. I'm going to leave that. Mm, no, nah, just kidding. I'm going to add a little touch of blue to it. All right, so now I'm going to lay out some of these guys. And... Remember... They're not all going in the same direction. I'm kind of focusing these so more behind the ones that I already laid out. And you can kind of play around with them. You want it to look like they're behind each other. So you want it to look like the carrots actually connect. So right now, like I keep saying, it's all about just laying down the silhouette of where we want them to go. And down here, you want some of these to overlap too, because they naturally would if they were all laying on a plate or on a table together, they would definitely overlap each other let me step back and kind of look and see where i want to add some more now i'm going to go in with even um some deeper burgundy to even give the appearance of even more um layers of the carrots And I'm kind of just adding some here and there, filling it out, seeing where I want to, where I feel like I need to add some more, all that good stuff. Step back again. Keep looking at my composition. I'm going to add one right here. All right. 
shorter one. put some of these over top of some of the orange ones too. Let me put one down here, a little one. All right, so I'm going to make one that has a little bit of magenta into it just to give it a different tone. So I'm going to use some magenta and some violet, a little touch of green in it to deepen it. I'm just diluting the paint, that's all. Let me step back again and look. All right. So I wanted this one to be completely different color. Step back again. step back again all right so typically I don't do that for this one I feel like it's necessary so I'm going to use my smaller flat brush and I'm going to take some dark brown and a little bit of black and I'm going to kind of add some definition around so you can differentiate the different carrots so I'm going to slightly outline them without just covering up the entire thing. And you want this to be really thin because you don't want this to be too thick at all. I'm using this brush just because we're roughly outlining them just to outline them. So I'm going to kind of play around with outlining them so we can see which ones are in the front and which ones are behind.
right now it's just about making sure the silhouettes of each one stands out so don't be too picky about it we're basically outlining each one in this dark brown And I typically don't do that, but for this one, I feel like it's necessary just because there's so many that overlap each other. Mm, I'm gonna use my liner brush. I think that might work a little bit better for me just for outlining this. There we go, and that's going a lot faster too. And we're just starting with the darks. We are going to go back in with those shades that we originally blocked them off with and add more color and depth and definition and all that stuff. So right now it's just about being able to see where they overlap and where the negative space is. And see, this is why it's helpful to do them in different tones, different shapes too. So then when you go back and want to add your definition and things of that nature, it's easier to see the whole composition. You'll most likely make less mistakes. It'll be easier for you to see the areas that are in the foreground and in the background. And with this liner brush, you want your paint to be pretty thin, almost like an ink consistency. It makes it easier um, to use the liner brush and it makes your lines more defined as well. So right now we're just using this to outline the silhouette so we can see where they stand out. Let's step back for a second. Okay. And I'm excited to get to show you guys how to use um, the artist spatula today because it's really going to help with adding um, texture to this piece and it's going to speed up the process a good amount too. And don't worry too much if you cover up what you already painted or anything like that. Because like I keep saying, we're going to go back and add more and more to this. And just outlining each one to make them stand out some more. So we can start to add texture, highlights, shadows, all of that good stuff and bring these to life.
and outlining all of these helps you to see all the ones that are in the background so you don't miss any of them. And I know it looks dark, but it's not black. It's just, it's a little bit of brown. Well, it's brown with a little bit of black mixed into it. still outlining them Still just outlining them and then we'll start doing some of the greenery and then we'll come back and start adding some of the color into the carrots. All right, almost done outlining everything, I promise. All right, so when it comes to doing all the stems or the greenery or whatever you want to call it up in here, um, I'm going to start with a dark green. I typically tend to start with my lighter, I mean, excuse me, my darker tones first and then add the lighter tones on top of that. All right, finally, finally got that outlined. 
All right, so let me decide how I want the composition to go for my greenery. So I'm going to start with the dark green. So I'm going to use my base green. And like usual, I'm going to add some red into it to darken it up. There we go. So I'm using my liner brush and I want this paint to be pretty thin. So I want to be able to sketch with this like a pencil. And the good thing about these is that they all kind of go in different directions. So some of them are going to curve. I'm just going to kind of play around with it. And I'm not being too picky because these are going to start to overlap and all that good stuff too. And see, I'm not making them all go in the same direction or anything like that. I'm just adding some stems to each one of the little carrots. Alright, and of course, some's going to go over top of our carrots, which is why I also didn't want to go in and start doing too much detail into the carrots until we had all of our composition laid out. And this is just a base green. This is not going to be the actual end result for the stems and all that good stuff. I'm just thinning out this paint even more. All right, I'm just gonna keep going until all of these have some greenery on them. And see, I'm just kind of going with the flow. Let me step back some. All right. I know right now it looks like some worms with some squiggles, but it's gonna start to come together once we get all of the composition down. All right. And I'm not making 
all of it going the same direction or anything like that. Almost done with this step, believe it or not. And I chose this dark brown to differentiate each one of the silhouettes because we're actually going to go in with that brown to do some um, shadows on the side of each one of these. So it's actually gonna blend in really nicely when we go back and fill it in with the actual tones. And I like to have things going off to the sides of the canvas. Why, I don't know, I just do. Going this way too. And it's okay if these overlap because we're going to add more definition to them, and all of this is going to kind of blend in together some anyway. So this guy's got some love. All right, step back. All right, excuse me for a second. I need to get something to drink. All right, so now that we've got this, all of this out, instead of using that really dark brown. I'm gonna lighten it up just a little bit. And I'm actually gonna go back and use that small uh, flat brush. Here we go. Since this is all dry now, it shouldn't push up any of our paint or anything like that. So we should be good to go. All right, so it's still pretty deep, but just a little bit um, lighter. And make sure it's nice and diluted or not too thick. But just with the flat brush, you kind of just want to tap into the sides of 
each one of these carrots. And you don't want your paint to be too thin to where it's translucent because you do want that tone on the sides. You don't want to cover up your entire line because you still want to be able to tell the difference between each one of the carrots. So I'm kind of just painting on the side of it and then kind of blending it out. And you'll notice, especially since the, these are kind of skinny, they'll kind of start to blend together in the middle, which is fine, that's what you want. If some of your stems come in front or in front of the carrots, make sure you go behind where the stem is and still add that darker shade for a shadow. And I'm just gonna do that same thing for the rest of them. So I'm gonna speed it up a little bit. That way I'm not talking too much. All right, just gonna go ahead and keep that moving. Just kind of blending it in the middle. Where was I at? Just going into the sides of it and then blending it into the middle, but softening up that line of demarcation, not completely covering it up, but softening it up. And you want to add some of that brown to each side. Just adding some of this brown onto the sides. Kind of covering up some of that outline that we did and blending into the middle. I'm just gonna keep doing that to all of these, get some, some of that shadow. And as you can see, I'm not being too picky. I'm blending into the sides and blending into the middle, making sure I don't cover up that whole entire line. So 
to kind of soften it up some. Still just touching up, adding some definition and soften up the outlines for these. Try to get where the stems kind of overlap. Make sure you kind of touch up in between as well. And I'm being picky to kind of go around where I placed the stems or the greenery or whatever you want to call it for carrots. Just softening the lines on the sides and kind of blending in with that deeper shade. So I'm gonna step back some. Okay. I'm gonna give some love to all this greenery, let that stand out some more. So I'm gonna make an even darker green, and then I'm gonna go back with some of the lighter shades. All right, so let's see. So more green. I need another palette. More green paint. Add 
put some red into that. A little bit of red at a time. There we go. Thin it out some so it's like an ink consistency. I will probably say that a hundred times each tutorial. It is what it is. Nope. I'm actually gonna add a touch, a little teeny tiny bit of some black into it. I want this pretty dark. There, that stands out a lot better. And I'm not being too picky about the shape of any of this right now. I just want them to stand out a little bit more and add some more definition to them. So I'm adding some darker green to it. And I'm not even completely covering up the original green line that we put down because you want that to kind of blend in with it too. Add in some darker touches to the screen. Let me step back. Okay. I'm just moving kind of quickly. I'm just kind of going over the green where I already put it with this darker tone so it will stand out a little bit more since we added some shadows to the carrots. Almost done with that part. Thank you. 
just going over that original green we put down with a darker tone just to make it stand out some more. Not being too particular, trying to follow the lines too much because some of that lighter green is going to aid in the complexity of the color of the stems. All right, let me step back and make sure I got all of them. All right, so now I'm going to go back in with some of those original tones that I used. So I'm going to, where's my yellow? There we go. Gonna start with the orange and then do pretty much the same thing I did. Do kind of um, two different burgundies, more of a redder tone and more of a, more of a redder tone and more of a burgundy and purple tone. I like to mix my paint with one of my fine brushes. I feel like I don't waste as much paint that way. But I'm going to paint this with um, my round brush. I'm just adding red and yellow together just to get the color that I want. I, add, I added a little teeny tiny bit of green to it so it wouldn't be too bright. And I'm kind of just going to squiggle into them like this. Not being too particular. All the orange ones. Give a touch of the orange like this. Remember to go in between where the stems or the greenery, whatever you want to call it is. And we're just going to go ahead and do that for all the orange ones. See, nothing too complicated. I'm just adding some of this light orange in the middle of the orange carrots. All right, and while all of that orange is still, uh, Wet. I'm going to go back in and go back onto the sides with some of that brown that I had and kind of blend into the sides into that orange. Just kind of blending it together and then kind of more so just blending it all together.
can see I'm just taking some of that brown and kind of blend it into those carrots, the orange ones. See how that's already starting to give texture? Step back again. And I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add some yellow into some of that orange and a little bit of white. And I want my brush to be kind of dry. And I'm just gonna put some light yellow kind of here and there. So see, I'm kind of just gonna go ahead and put down the yellow and then blend it out and see this is why I love acrylic because it dries so fast and you don't have to wait forever to finish a painting add a little bit more right in here there we go. All right, blending it out. Add in little touches of yellow where the orange carrots are drying off my brush and kind of blend it into the colors that we already put down. All right, and then this last little one right in here. Wipe my brush off again and blend it out. And see, I'm kind of scratching into the canvas. You can do little circular motions too. I didn't add any water to the brush because I kind of wanted to give a scratched R dry effect especially since this is a root vegetable it's going to have more of a textured consistency or a rough consistency that I didn't want it to be too smooth let me step back okay and I'm pretty much going to mimic that same thing with the rest of them So, just 
some more paint. Goodness, me and this paint. There we go. All right, so I'm going to make some more of that darker brown tone, not too dark, mixing a little bit of some dark brown and black. You don't want to add any white to it because it's going to make it tan. And then you won't be able to go back and lighten it up or darken it up. You'll have to mix a whole nother color. All right. As a matter of fact, we did this with our small flat brush. So I'm going to keep on with that. And we're just going to do that same thing. And I'm kind of just going to blend it in the middle and blend it out. Because it's basically going to have a little touch here and there and everywhere. I knew I had missed a line I, that I would find it right here. And soften that up some but yeah I'm just kind of blending into the middle and into the sides with this lighter brown tone just to soften up the edges Just want to kind of make sure I blend out those lines. Nothing too complicated. I'm literally doing the same thing that I just did with, to the orange ones. Now, when you get to some of the areas where the stems kind of overlap the carrots, it's okay if you cover them up with a little bit of that brown. We can always go back and touch them up at the end. So more so just blending in the middle and blending out the edges of the sides. So it's not just a sharp edge. And see, my brush is pretty dry. That's why you can hear it on the canvas like that. I'm not adding a lot of, not really adding any water to this brush because I want it to give a rustic texture, which is why I'm kind of scratching into it like this. Now, if your paint isn't blending or moving at all, then you probably do need to add um, a little bit of water onto your brush. All right. 
believe it or not. I think that's mostly all of them. Alright, so I'm going to brighten these up and I'm going to add, I'm going to use some magenta. And some red. And a little teeny tiny bit of green. Mm, I need some more red. Way more green to that. I need that darker. Get some more magenta. I'm clean my brush off a good deal. I think I like that color finally. I'm gonna thin it out some. Really, I'm not gonna thin it out with any water. I'm just brushing off the excess paint. And that same thing, I'm gonna do little lines in the middle. Well, I'm gonna actually, and I'm gonna cover the whole thing and blend it out to brighten up these ones. So kind of cover up the whole thing, blending it into the sides, but still being able to tell the different carrots from each other. This is more about just brightening up that, adding some more color and softening up those lines.
I'm still just doing the same thing, kind of blending a little bit all over these purple carrots. Putting the paint on there. If I get too much, wipe off the extra and blend it out into the sides. step back again all right I'm gonna brighten this up some more so I think I'm actually gonna do some touches of that brilliant red that really bright red with a little bit of magenta in it to where it's pretty bright Kind of add in some touches here and there and then blending it out. We're not covering up the whole thing with this color. We're kind of just adding a little bit of brightness here and there. This one right here is a little bit tricky because I've got a lot of greenery covering it up. Step back again. And I'm lighting these up some more. I'm gonna add a little teeny tiny bit of white to that same color and a good bit amount of that red so it's still kind of bright. And I'm gonna use my liner brush again. And just like we did um, for the orange. I'm going to add some here and there, and then I'm going to kind of scratch it out. Here and there. And then blend it out. Blend it out into the middle and out into the sides.
just add in some lighter shades and in the middles and then blending them out. And I have not added any water to my brush. I'm using some dry brush techniques. It's gonna kind of feel like you're scratching the canvas. And see, I'm just adding some in the middle and blending it. Nothing too complicated. All right, we're basically done with the carrots. We're gonna go and give some love to all the greenery, and then we are going to use our um, painting um, spatula to do some details on the carrots, and then we'll be done. We'll be done, we'll be done at the end of that. So, I'm gonna use my larger liner brush. Which one's larger? All right, and I am going to mix up a bright green. So some green, some white, and a good amount of yellow because I want it pretty bright. There we go. I like that color, so let me just thin it out so I can get nice smooth lines with my liner brush. to make sure I had a good amount already thinned out. That way I don't have to keep diluting the paint. Probably still will anyway, but hey, thought I'd try to speed it up some. So this is really going to brighten up the picture and show you even more so where these stems are. Right, and this is adding a lot of brightness to that. So I'm gonna go back in with these with some yellows also, and then go back and add some more contrast with some of that darker green tones as well.
touches of this lighter green everywhere where all these stems are. It's going to help all those carrots stand out some too. Just add in some light green to all of these little stems. Right, we're pretty much done with this. step back okay I'm gonna brighten these up some too I'm actually gonna add some orange to them and do that same technique the little liner brush I just want to make Kind of deep orange. Good Lord, I keep going through the red paint, but hey, I need it.
Look again. Okay, yeah. I'm not going to add as much of this color to them. Just wanted to brighten these up some more. So I'm not going to be too picky with this. I just want to add some lightness to some of these because they're pretty dark. Just putting down little pieces of that lighter shade and scrunching it out, blending it out. Still doing a dry brush technique. And kind of wiggle it out. this one quite a bit lighter so you can kind of see more so where that one where they overlap each other all right finish up with this one this one spot right there there we go all right I'm gonna step back again I know I keep saying that but that's my process oh yeah I like that better okay I'm gonna add some touches of yellow into some of these spots too step back and see if I like that before I keep going with it. Yeah, I'm going to cover it back up with some more of that magenta. All right, so let's go back into some of these stems and yellow, I need yellow.
I deepen the yellow just a little bit by mixing it with some of that lighter orange that we had, but it's still fairly light yellow. And I'm just gonna add some touches here and there where the stems are. And just thinning out the paint some, diluting it some. And see, I'm not following the whole line. I'm just adding little touches of yellow here and there. Add in some yellow here and there where I kind of want to brighten it up some. I think the yellow is a nice touch because there's a lot of dark tones in this painting. Just thinning out a little bit more yellow paint. All right, step back again. All right, so I'm gonna use my larger round brush now, and I'm going to go back in with a little bit of darker green and make sure um, the paint is not too thick on the brush because I want to blend so I'm thinning out the paint but not to the point to where it's dripping or anything like that and I don't want these lines to be too thick so I'm kind of more so just painting with the the tip of that brush and more so I'm blending in the colors that I put down. I'm not trying to do any fine lines or anything like that. You don't want to press too hard because we're really kind of just using the tip of this brush. I wanted to use the larger from, excuse me, round brush because it will blend faster than that little teeny tiny liner brush that we were using. So after this, we're going to play around with the artist's um, spatula. And then we'll do our last little highlights with some black and white. And then we'll be done.
and I'm just kind of blending out the color that I already put down on there. I'm not trying to cover it all up. I'm not trying to do really small lines or anything like that. See how it's just starting to kind of blend in with all those tones that we already put down. Just still doing the same thing, blending in with this. With this round brush. Step back. Okay. I'm pretty much liking that. So, now the fun with the spatula. So, I'm actually going to use, it doesn't matter if you, doesn't matter if it comes to a point, if it's just flat, if it's a popsicle stick, a fork, whatever. Basically, I'm going to add some brown paint to the side of the spatula and some white paint and a little bit of black. And kind of scrape it onto the canvas like that. Um, excuse me, to the spatula like that. And in one corner, I'm going to kind of touch and add little marks like that. You can also use um, you can also use your flat brush for this, but I like the texture that the spatula gives you. So kind of put some down and then kind of blend it out. And you don't really want to add any water to the spatula for this either. And sometimes I just do a kind of a line down it. Then Use the spatula to kind of spread it out. See? So I'm kind of just playing around with black, brown, and a little bit of white. So I'm going to touch into it and then spread some of that out. I'm going to go through with some brown, I think, first, and then go back over top of it, do that same technique with some white. You don't need a whole lot of paint. If you put too much paint on, scrape it off with the spatula. And you're kind of just pushing it out to the sides. Let's 
see how that's just aiding in that kind of textured look. Let me step back. But I'm liking that. So I'm going to do this with the browns. I'm going to speed it up some, and then I'm going to do the same thing um, with some lighter tones as well. I'm just using the tip of the spatula and um, almost doing kind of little dots of the brown paint and then I'm pushing it with the spatula to the side. scratching with the spatula too just like we did with pretty much everywhere else I'm gonna do all of the purple ones first and then I'm gonna go back and touch up the orange ones that way it make it easier for me to remember if I did some or not Make sure you don't have too much paint down in the area before you start to blend with the spatula. See, very, very easy tool to use, but it helps to add a lot of texture. All right, let me come back on this side and see what we got going on. All right. So let's give the orange carrot some love too. So I'm just kind of dotting some of the brown down and then just spreading it out with the spatula. And I'm not using a whole bunch, just a little bit. Look, and I said I was only gonna do this for an hour, but as you can see, that is not what happened. And actually, I think I'm only going to use the, oh no, let me wait before I say that. Let me 
my step back again. Yep, I'm gonna do that same thing with the white. It's not gonna be solid white. I'm gonna mix a little bit of that brown in with some white and some yellow. But it's gonna be pretty pale. I don't want it to be just a plain white. that same technique I'm not even cleaning off the spatula step back you know what mm, I'm gonna add some more of that brown over top of that I'm not a huge fan of that. And go back in with some orange. touch that one up at the end because I didn't like that lighter shade that I put in it. All right, so I I think I'm going to be done with the spatula and I'm going to use that small flat brush to do some highlights with the white and then I'll use my liner brush at the very end. And I'm going to use my flat brush because I'm not really going to blend or anything like that. I'm kind of just going to add little indentation marks in certain spots. Just to give some more texture. And this isn't solid white. I did mix a little bit of brown into it too. And I'm just going to go ahead and add some touches of this lighter shade to all of them. You can see I'm kind of just doing little lines just to give it a rust rustic texture and feel to it. And I picked this brush because it's already got a flat line and it'll go a lot faster than using your little liner brush. And see, I'm not putting them all in the same area or anything like that. Just a little, the middle and the sides, the top and the bottom. step back yep that added a lot to the image 
So I'm going to do the same thing with that. And I'm actually going to use black. I'm not going to use the dark brown. I'm going to use black. That same brush. I want it pretty thin because I'm just doing little lines. And I'm not going to just go over top of everywhere where I did white. Going to kind of touch up some other areas. And after we do this, we're going to do some shadows and highlights into the leaves. And then that's it. I'm done after that. I'm not going to do anything else. I am using a little bit of water for this just because I want that paint to be really thin just so I can get really crisp lines with the black and I can do it quickly and see I'm putting some on in the middle on either side I'm not putting them just in the same place or on the same side basically doing the same exact thing I did with this brush with the white and adding little teeny touches of black and as you can see I'm not doing any really dark bold lines with it all right let me step back again So yep, I'm going to add some details of the white and the black up in here, and that's it. Then I'm done, and I'm going to use my really fine liner brush for that. I'm going to do the white first, and then I'm going to finish with the black, and then we are done. And pretty much took around the same amount of time as... It did for our last painting, so I'm not too upset about that. Just making sure this is nice and thin. And smooth onto my brush. And I'm not going to cover up the whole entire lines of anything. I just want to add little highlights here and there. See how that helps for all of those guys to stand out too? It's funny what just adding the little touches of white and black at the end of the painting, what all a dramatic effect that can make. Just those two colors.
Let's step back. All right, perfect. I'm gonna add my touches of the black and we are done. Then we're gonna call it a day after that. Or at least we are for this. I've got another painting I'm gonna paint after this, but that's just for me. Just thinning out this black paint. Go ahead and thin it out so I don't have to keep doing it while I'm trying to finish up, especially since this is the last step. And I'm not going to go overboard with the black. You don't need a lot of black. So kind of where some of them overlap. And just add in just pretty much the same thing we did with the white when we were doing the highlights. Kind of just add in some black here and there, just kind of where I feel like it needs some contrast. All right, don't forget these two down here. Let me step back from it again and see if I want to add anything. And no, no. I take that back. I'm gonna add little touches of green into the stems and then, then I'm done. I promise then. Just little places where I feel like I might add it too much black. As you can see, that's not taking that long. I'm just adding little touches of green to blend in some of that white and black that we use for the highlights and lowlights. Just a little bit. I'm not covering up all of it. I'm just adding a little bit to it. All right, let's step back one more time. Okay, 
I'm actually pretty happy with that. I didn't want to get too complex when it came to using the spatula since this was the first time for me to show it to you guys. So I will come back with another tutorial um, soon, introducing that in a more complex, complicated way. So as for today, we are done. I hope you guys enjoyed painting along with me. If you did, please make sure that you subscribe and turn on your bell notifications so you won't miss any of my tutorials. And thank you guys so much for joining me. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. I will see you guys next time.